Hello to everyone. Welcome to the course on numerical linear algebra and application. Today we are going to have 33rd lecture. Before going to 33rd lecture, let us quickly recall what we did in the previous lecture. We were trying to do the singular values, how the matrix would be decomposed using four different methods. Today we are going to have some examples in related to this four singular value decompositions. Let us see the first example. Find all real orthogonal 2 by 2 matrices. Suppose that the real matrix A is equal to ABCD is orthogonal. Thus, we can write it as A transpose times of A is I of 2 because A is 2 by 2 order. Because A is 2 by 2 order, so we will write it as 2 by 2 order orthogonal matrix. So that is A transpose A will be equivalent to I2, which implies A is A, C, B, D and A transpose is A, B, C, D. So multiply these two matrices, you do get, you need to get it as 1, 0, 0, 1. So if you take the matrix multiplication of these two, so it would be first row, first column. A square plus C square will be 1. Similarly, if you look at this second row, second column, B square plus D square is 1. Yes. Similarly, if you take the first row and second column, AB plus CD, which would happen to be 0. Similarly, AD plus that is second row first column AD plus DC happens to be 0. Now the first equation arises that at the point A comma C lies to the circle X square plus Y square is equal to 1. Hence there is an angle theta theta in 0 to 2 pi such that A is equal to cos of theta, c is equal to sin of theta. Similarly, there is an angle phi in the interval such that b is equal to cos of phi and d is equal to sin of phi. So therefore, we will have ab plus cd is equal to 0 that is cos theta cos phi plus sin theta sin phi happens to be 0 which implies cos of phi minus theta is 0 phi minus theta is pi by 2 plus or minus pi by 2 or 3 pi by 2. If theta is equal to phi plus pi by 2 or phi is equal to theta minus 3 pi by 2 we find b is equal to minus sin phi and d is equal to cos phi. So essentially you computed b is equal to minus sin theta and d is equal to cos of theta. So if on the other hand phi is equal to theta minus pi by 2, phi is equal to theta minus pi by 2 and phi is equal to theta plus pi by 2, it follows that b is equal to sin theta and d is equal to minus cos theta. Therefore, we conclude that A must be one of the forms that is cos theta minus sin theta sin theta cos theta multiplied with cos theta sin theta sin theta minus cos theta. So, that is G theta belongs to 0, 2 phi. 
it is easy to see these matrices are orthogonal. The first matrix represents anti-clockwise rotation in R2 through angle theta. The second matrix corresponds to a reflection in R2 in the line through the origin making an angle theta pi by 2 with positive x direction. Now let us look at it to the second example. Write the following matrix in the QR factorization. So you have the matrix A, first row is 1, 1, 2, second row is 1, 2, 3, third row is 1, 1, 1. So let us apply gram squit orthogonal process for the columns x1, x2, x3 of A which are linear independent and so form a basis for the column space of A. So the seals an orthogonal basis y1, y2, y3. So what is y1? y1 is x1 upon norm of x1 and uh, yeah this is equal to 1 square plus 1 square 1 square root 3 that is 1, 1 root 3. So essentially 1 by root 3 times of x1. Now compute S2 on S1. So that is P1 is equal to X2, X1. So they are orthogonal X2, X1 multiplied with Y1. So X2 is 1 to 1 and Y1 is the updated 1 by root 3 ta times of 1, 1, 1. So and Y1 is 1 by root 3 times of 1, 1, 1. So essentially all together this turns out to be 1 by root 3 plus 1 by root 3 plus 2 by root 3 multiplied with 1 by root 3 times of 1, 1, 1. So essentially you do get as P1 as 4 by root 3 times of 1 by root 3 times of 1, 1, 1. So this is 4 by 3 times of 1, 1, 1. Thus, we have the matrix y2 is equal to 1 by norm of x2 minus p1. y2 is equal to 1 by norm of x2 minus p1 multiplied with x2 minus p1. So that will be equivalent to 1 over norm of, so that is 1 to 1 vector, 4 by 3, 4 by 3, 4 by 3 vector multiplied with 1 to 1 minus of p1, that is 4, 3, 4 over 3, 4 over 3. So it turns out to be minus 1 by 3, 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3 and divide with norm of minus 1 by 3, 2 by 3, minus 1 by 3. And when you simplify this, it takes into the form 1 by root 6 times of minus 1, 2, minus 1. So that will be equivalent to 2 root 6 by 3 x1 plus root 6 by 2 x2. And this p3 is x3 x x3 y1 multiplied with y1 plus x3 y2 multiplied with y2. Similarly, by calculating y3, we will get as y3 is this matrix. 1 over norm of x3 minus p2 multiplied with x3 minus p2, what will be equivalent to 1 by root 2, 1, 0, minus 1. That will be equivalent to minus of 3 by 2 times of root 2 x2 plus root 2 times of x of 3. Every invertible matrix A can be written as A is equal to Q into R, where Q is the real orthogonal matrix and R is a real upper triangular matrix with positive entries on the main principal diagonal. Solving the equations, we will get x1 is equal to root 3 times of y1 and x2 is equal to 4 by 3 times of root 3 y1 plus root 6 by 3 times of y2 and x3 is 2 root 3 y1 plus root 6 by 2 y2 plus root 2 by 2 times of y3. So we have R is equal to that is upper triangular matrix, these are all zeros, these are all non-zeros and Q is equal to AR minus 1. So you will have this 1 by root 3 minus 1 by root 6, 1 by root 2, 
1 over root 3, 2 over root 6, 0. And this is 1 over root 3 minus 1 by root 6 minus 1 over root of square root of 2. What is the remark says? The least square solution of the system that is x1 plus x2 plus 2x3 is equal to 1 x1 plus 2x2 plus 3x3 is equal to 2, x1 plus 2x2 plus x3 is equal to 1. Here this is a coefficient matrix A, 1, 1, 2, 1, 2, 3, 1, 2, 1 and B is a matrix 1, 2, 1. And Q is the matrix 1 over root 3 minus 1 over root 6, 1 over root 2, 1 over root 3, 2 over root 6, 0, 1 over root 3, minus 1 over root 6, minus 1 over root 2. That is the form of the matrix Q. Similarly, the matrix R is, this is the matrix, these are all zeros. So, it is orthogonal matrix and you get R inverse is like this. So, 1 over root 3, minus 4 over root 6, 0, 0, 3 by root 6, minus 3 upon root 2, 0, 0, root 2. So, this is a form of the matrix and this is the zeros. Hence, the least square solution is x is equal to R inverse of Q transpose B. So, therefore, capital X is equal to 1 over root 3 minus 4 by root 6, 0 and 0, 3 over root 6 minus 3 over root 2, 0, 0, root 2. So, this is upper triangular matrix. Similarly, when you write it multiplied with the matrix, you get as 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, 1 by root 3, minus 1 by root 6, 2 by root 6, minus 1 by root 6 and this is multiplied with 1, 2, 1. So, you get as 0, 1, 0. So, essentially your matrix will be therefore x1 is equal to 0, x2 is equal to 1 and x3 is 0. Find the projection of the vector x on the column space of the matrix A. So, we write x is equal to 1, 1, 1 and the matrix A is equal to 1, 2, 1, 3, minus 1, 4. So, let us denotes the column space of matrix A since the column spaces all are green and independent and they form a basis S. So, we have to find a vector y in S such that x minus y is orthogonal to both columns of A. So, x minus y orthogonal to A, columns of A. So, then x minus y will belong to S perpendicular and y will be the projection of the vector on S. Now, y must be of the form you see over here, y is equal to x multiplied with 1 to 1 plus y multiplied with 3 minus 1, 4 and this will become x plus 2y, 2x minus y and it is x plus 4y. So, ultimately we get this matrix. So, therefore, x minus y orthogonal to a1 that will vanish, x minus y inner product a2 that will vanish. So, that means x minus y is orthogonal to a, x minus y is orthogonal to a2. where a1 a2 are columns of the matrix A. Therefore, we can write it as 1 minus x minus 3y multiplied with plus 2 into 1 minus 2x plus y plus 1 minus x plus 2y, it will vanish, automatically satisfies. So, second row also like this. So, you get the matrix, the vectors are x is equal to 74 upon 131, y is equal to 16 upon 131. So, it is small fractions, therefore y will be of this form. Some more examples you can see, let us see we wanted to find out singular value decomposition of the matrix A. So, all of us we know very well, A we will be writing in terms of u into sigma v transpose where the matrix A is of that is 2 rows, 3 columns, 2 over 3. First we compute singular values sigma i by finding the eigenvalues of A transpose A. So that means A transpose A or A into A transpose will be like this. So 3, 2, 2, 2, 3 minus 2 multiplied with 3, 2, 2, 2, 3 minus 2. So you get a matrix of 2 by 2 which is 17, 8, 8, 17.
Now, when you take this determinant of this matrix, that is 17 minus lambda 8, 8, 17 minus lambda is equal to 0. So, you get values of lambda as 15 comma 0. Therefore, the eigenvalues of A transpose A are 25, 9, 0. Right? So, it is, uh, yeah, lambda is equal to, so lambda minus 25 times of lambda minus 9. So, 25 in times of 9 to 25. So, this is a 25. So, not actually 15. So, that means lambda is equal to 25 comma 9. So, when you take square root of this, this is 3 and this is 5. So, essentially sigma 1 is equal to 5 and sigma 2 is equal to 3. Now, we find the right singular vectors by finding an orthonormal set of eigenvectors of matrix A transpose A. So, A transpose A, where A transpose A is symmetric. This is symmetric. So, which implies the eigenvectors will be orthogonal. So, you have a matrix A transpose A. So, that is A transpose A. So, you get the matrix of this form. 13, 12, 2, 12, 13, minus 2, 2, minus 2, 8. For lambda is equal to 25, so you will have a matrix like this. A transpose A is minus 25 I, which is minus 12, 12, 2, 12, minus 12, minus 2, 2, minus 2, and minus 17. And R1 to R2, so R3, that is 2, minus 2, 17. 12 minus 12 minus 2 minus 12 12 2 and R3 plus R2 if you do it 2 minus 2 17 12 minus 12 2 and rest are zeros similarly over here. So this is already 0 so only this much you do have it. So R2 minus 12 R1 which turns out to be R2. So, R2 would be updated to this. So, this is a main diagonal. These are all zeros. So, already it has come sparse matrix. So, when you multiply this matrix 1 minus 1 minus 17 by 2 0 0 100 0 0 0 x1 x2 x3. So, you get as x1 plus minus 17 by x2 2 is equal to x3 and this is 0 and this is 0 and this is 0 and lastly you will have x3 is equal to 0. So, therefore, the whole idea is all values of x1, 0, x2, 0, and we get the eigenvectors as 1, 1, 0. So, the orthonormal basis vectors is given by the expression y1. So, v1 is 1 over norm of 1, 1, 0 times of 1, 1, 0. So, that is equal to this matrix and ultimately you get this matrix. 1 by root 2, 1 by root 2, 0 is the pertinent matrix. And for lambda is equal to 9, we can write it as A transpose A multi minus of 9i. So, when you do A transpose A of minus 9i, you get 4 and it is 12, it is 2 and 14, 4, minus 17, 2, minus 2 and minus 4. So, again if you make it these entries as zeros, so it is 0, 1, 1, 0, 0, 0. So, a unit vector in the kernel, so you can write it as V1 is equal to that is 1 over square root of 18, 2 over square root of 18 minus 4 over square root of 18. For the last eigenvector, we could compute the kernel of a transpose of A and find a unit vector perpendicular to V1 and V2. So, V1 is perpendicular to V2. To be perpendicular to V3, so we will have A, B, C. So, we consider the matrix that is V1 transpose V3 is equal to 0. So, which implies 1 over root 2 plus 1 over root 2 0. So, multiplied with A, B, C, so which will vanish. And moreover, you write it as 1 over root 2 times of a plus b is 0. 
so that is a plus b is equal to 0 so b is equal to minus of a and v2 transpose v3 which will happen to be 0 so we can write it as 1 by square root of 18 minus 1 by square root of 18 times of 4 upon square root of 18 multiplied with abc which happen to be 0. So therefore this will be 28 by 2a by square root of 28 18 4c by square root of 18 is happens to be 0 so you get the value of c as minus 1 by 2. So essentially so v3 you get in terms of a that is a b is equal to minus a that is minus a and c is equal to minus of a by 2. So once if you know the value of a we could compute the values of the v3. And for it to be unit vector we need a is equal to 2 by 3. So finally we write 2 by 3 minus 2 by 3 1 by 3. At this point we know that a is equal to u times of sigma v transpose. So a is, u is this matrix and sigma is of already we spoke that is eigenvalues y0 0 0 3 0 and v transpose is this matrix. So finally we compute by formula a1 u1 is equal ui is equal to avi or u is equal to 1 by sigma of avi where sigma is free from 0. And then you get the matrix u is equal to 1 by root 2 1 by root 2, 1 over root 2, minus 1 by root 2. So, in the full glory, the singular value decomposition would be written in this following fashion. So, this is the matrix called U and this is the matrix sigma and this is the matrix V transpose. So, what we have seen today lecture is, we have seen some examples related to the singular value decomposition and how it can be used for different applications, especially when you talk about the gram split or the normal process and so on and so forth. Thank you very much. I will stop over here. Thank you very much once again.